Section 2.3 is titled Polynomial Functions of Higher Degree with Modeling. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at the graphs of polynomial functions of higher degree. Um, just kind of some properties and characteristics of those graphs. Namely, we'll look at the in behavior of those functions. We'll also look at zeros, uh, how to find them uh, graphically and algebraically. We'll also talk just a little bit about uh, extrema of polynomial functions, meaning the minimum and maximum uh, that these functions would have and how many that they will have. The first slide in your notes is an exploration activity. Uh, I'm not going to go over it here in the video, uh, but I would encourage you to spend five minutes or so and, and try it on your own. Uh, what follows on the next slide just kind of ties up this exploration activity, kind of sums up all your findings uh, that you should have once doing it. So we'll begin with uh, what we call the leading coefficient test. This test uh, gives us a way to determine the end behavior of a polynomial function. Uh, the end behavior of a polynomial function just by looking at its leading coefficient. That's all. Um, so I've got this divided into four graphs and we'll, we'll characterize each one like this. Um, all polynomial functions are either going to have an even degree or an odd degree. Okay, so even powers over here, that would be like x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, etc. And then odd powers over here, so x, x cubed, x to the fifth, etc. So all polynomial functions are one of those two cases. Now, for each of those two cases, the polynomial function is either going to have a leading coefficient that is positive or it's negative. Okay, that's all that can happen. We could have, say, a positive x to the fourth, or we could have, say, a negative 3x to the sixth. You know, the, the number in front of, so the coefficient, the number in front of uh, the highest power term is always going to be positive or negative. All right, positive or negative. It cannot be anything else. So if we uh, look at even or odd, positive or negative, it leads us to four possible outcomes and nothing else. So these are what's going to happen. If it is even function and, uh, or even powered, even degree, let's say like that, not even function, but if the highest power is even and it's positive, well then it will look like this on the ends. And in the middle it can do uh, a whole host of things depending on what that power actually is. What's going to happen though is it's going to go up on the left and up on the right. If it's even a negative, it's going to come down on the left and down on the right. Okay, so with even degreed uh, polynomials, so either both ends go up or both ends go down, depending on if it's positive or negative. If it's odd degree, the ends are going to do opposite behavior. Um, what will happen if it's odd and positive is it'll go down on the left. And it can do all sorts of stuff in the middle, and it's going to go up on the right. And if it's odd and negative, it's just going to be the flip of that. Just the, um, it's going to go up on the left. Uh, whoops. It actually goes down on the right. I got a little carried away there, so oopsie there. So. With odd, positive or negative, it's either going to go down and up, so down on the left, up on the right, or it's going to go up on the left and certainly very much down on the right. So just ignore that little bit, I got a little carried away. What we'd like to be able to do is determine the in behavior of a function without looking at its graph. And that leading coefficient test is going to tell us all that we need to know. Um, the end behavior of a function is all controlled by the highest powered term. We just look at that x to the third, we could ignore all the rest of that. Okay, so if it is x to the third, 
what would its graph look like? Um, well, so we have to determine, is it even or odd? Is it positive or negative? And so we can look at that third power right here. That's odd. It's got a one in front, so that's positive. So an odd and positive is gonna come down on the left, up on the right, and who knows what it's gonna do in between here. And we'll get a better picture as we go forward in this lesson, but it's gonna do some stuff in the middle. But these are the important things. It's gonna go down on the left and up on the right. Now what we'd like to do is describe this in behavior using limits. And we've done a little bit of that in the past. Uh, so let's describe this one here. I would say the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm choosing infinity because we're going to the right, and to the right is infinity on the x-axis. Um, so the limit as x approaches infinity of this function f of x equals infinity. And the reason I chose infinity here is because the function is going up. The f of x, which is the y, is going up. So as we go right, we go up. That's this limit here. This one, I'm doing really the, the two opposite directions. This one I'm describing going to the left. So that's going to be negative infinity. And the function is going down. So that's negative infinity. So left and down. So there's its in behavior with limits. One more example of the same thing, describe the in behavior using limits. So again, I look at this first term, I ignore everything else. Uh, the in behavior is all controlled right here. I notice that it's even and it's positive. Okay, even, positive number in front. So even and positive. Now if you go back a couple slides, you'll see what an even and positive function looks like on the end behavior, it's going to go up on the left, up on the right, and it can do all sorts of ups and downs and stuff to connect them in the middle, but that's its end behavior, is that both sides are going to go up. Now again, describing this with limits. This one here, well, I'm describing the right side, so that is x approaching infinity. And what direction is the function going on the right side? The function's going up, and up is positive infinity. Okay. This one here. Well, this time I'm describing what's happening on the left as I go out uh, towards the negative numbers. So x is approaching negative infinity. And what's happening to the function as I go to the left? The function is going up. See the arrow pointing up, so that's positive infinity. There's my limits describing what I'm showing on the graph, this in behavior. On this next slide, we're gonna talk about extrema and zeros of polynomial functions. And it's titled theorem, but I don't wanna get super wordy here, and I don't wanna write a whole paragraph. So what I'm gonna do is uh, draw some pictures to show you what can happen, and the pictures will be summarizing kind of this theorem and, and the findings that this theorem reveals. Um, so let's look at, uh, maybe we'll just do four graphs. Um, these are just gonna be rough sketches of four graphs. Okay, I kind of got squashed there at the end, but we'll get the idea here. What I'm gonna do is show you a graph of, just a generic kind of graph of um, x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth. So we'll just kind of investigate what starts to happen as the power of x increases uh, on each of these graphs. Well, what can happen with x to the square, x to the second, x squared, uh, is, and we're familiar with these. These graphs usually look like that. X to the third can sometimes look like this. 
x to the fourth, we've seen them before, maybe I'll do this one going down, looks maybe something like this. X to the fifth, I'll start this one up here, maybe it comes like that. Okay, and so what do we start to see with these? Um, like what kind of findings can we, can we state? Um, well, concerning local extrema, local extrema are the high and the low points, okay, the minimums and maximums. And so let's identify them here. I'll just use little x's. There's a, an extrema. Here, this graph has two of them. This graph has three of them. This function, this graph, has four of them. And so what do you notice about the number of extrema that we have and the power that we see in the function up above? Okay, well we'd see that, you know, look again here, x to the fourth, three extrema. x to the fifth, one, two, three, four extrema. So what we can see is that the number of local extrema is, we'll say, at most, one less than the degree. Okay, uh, I want to say at most um, because it's possible that there could be less. Okay, sometimes x to the fourth powered functions, depending on the other terms, look like and act like x squareds, and they only have one. Sometimes an x to the third, um, you know, may not have any. It might just kind of go like this, and it may not have any higher low point. You know, but the most they can have is one less than the degree. Okay, and now what about concerning the zeros of the function? So let's see, the zeros. Well, let's see, here's a zero. I'll just put dots on this there. There's two there. There's three here. There's four on this one. There's five on this one. So you might have noticed as we were counting those out on these, we could say that the number of zeros is, and again, I'm going to use this language at most, um, we'll say equal to the degree. Okay. It is going to be impossible to have more zeros than the degree of the function. So an x to the fourth powered function cannot cross the x-axis more than four times. An x to the second cannot cross more than two times. We know from experience and practice that sometimes it crosses the x-axis less than the power. For example, uh, it's possible to see an x squared graph look like this. It doesn't cross at all. Uh, it's possible for an x to the third graph to go maybe like this and just cross once. Okay, It's possible to, to conceive these so that they cross the x-axis um, less than the power, but it is impossible to cross the x-axis more times than the power of the function. Okay, so that's kind of these two theorems about extrema and zeros summarized. Now what we're going to finish this lesson on is looking primarily at zeros of the functions. How do we begin to find those? Um, and really the next couple of lessons after this one focus primarily just on finding the zeros of polynomial functions. That'll be kind of the main theme going forward in the rest of this particular uh, chapter.